Hi guys, welcome to a video by Antiques Arena. My name is Walter O'Neill. And uh, in this video, I'm gonna show you the stock I bought yesterday uh, in Spot Market. Uh, yesterday being Saturday, and I was down Spot Market with my mother, five o'clock in the morning. Unfortunately, my camera's gone AWOL a minute, so I can't film while I'm out. I'm borrowing my son's camera when I get home a minute, but I will find it. Uh, bought some really nice pieces my favorite piece of all uh, was a piece of early 19th century it's only a fragment or a lid you know it's missing the bottom half absolutely love it uh, but i've done a special video on this separately now this piece of chinese porcelain was 50 pence and dates from about 18 20 18 30 and i've done a video helping you understand how to date it so that's i love that one You'll have to excuse my appearance guys, I am seriously rough, full up of a cold, uh, again, second time in uh, two weeks. Um, so, if I, I, if I look a bit rough, sorry, you just have to deal with it. Right, uh, okay, so, we'll carry on. Uh, I love this piece. Now, what we go next is a silk. Oh, excuse me. Excuse me. I told my bill. Ah, sorry, guys. So we have an absolute amazing silk. I can't see. Sam, is that in the picture? Yeah. Let me step back a bit. Now, in the centre there, we have. So flags, lest we forget, 3rd of September, 1939. Home sweet home, united we stand. And this is the United Nations. One of my tags. So. All these are embroidered into the silk, guys. So we have a United Nations embroidered um, bit of silk in remembrance of the start of the Second World War. Now I paid a fiver for that off a dealer I know down in Splot and I absolutely love it. Uh, I had a chuck 35, 40 pound on that and if somebody wanted to frame that up, you know, they'd happily get 75, 85, 95 pound. Uh, it's a lovely piece, a lovely condition. And I'll happily sell that in the shop. Because you really are really, really rough. I know. Um, Spot wasn't going really well. I bought a few pieces here and there, and then one car came in again, guys. Now, this one car came in, and they were selling stuff from all over the world. India, um, Asia, um, Persia, they've been... They've been to Jerusalem, they've been to Egypt, they've been to China, they've been everywhere. And they had pieces from everywhere they went, they brought pieces home. This piece here is absolutely amazing. It's a Jewish candlestick. Oh, that's cool. I didn't know I'd open that up. All the brass is textured. It's not just plain brass. Uh, has Jerusalem in cast along here underneath it's uh, made in Israel with a maker's mark of I can't even read it but there it is uh, hang on okay so the maker's mark W-A-I-N-B-E-R-G it looks like uh, made in Israel Solid brass These branches all turn round uh, Really really nice Candelabra candlestick Jewish candlestick Real nice quality guys that really is top quality uh, And the best part about it is They brought it back So it's a genuine piece from the uh, area they brought it back with them when they traveled I spoke to the family and I said how jealous I was 
just looking at the variety of things they had for sale, uh, the, how they've lived their life, I thought, wow, what a life you've had. Now, they sold me this for £2.50, and I rate that about £25 to £35, uh, somewhere around there. I'll probably ask 30 mid-range and see what I get, but it is absolutely stunning quality. Uh, <laughs> next piece in, I'll show you the rest of the stuff I had off that family in a minute. Next piece in, a van, <laughs> a van came in and they were chucking out all sinks and all, all industrial um, vintage pieces. And I looked like that and I could see in the back man, I said, how much is your lampshade please? Industrial enamel lampshade, stinking dirty, but I'll clean that up, no problem, it won't take long, it'll all come off. In lovely condition, a uh, little bit of damage but they on the one side, which is neither here nor there, don't worry about that. And um, they sold it to me for three pound. And I thought, well, that's no problem at all. That's a 15, 20 pound uh, piece in my shop all day long, no problem. And then after I bought it, she was whispering to her husband, and then she turned out to me, she said, Do you watch Drew? And I said, Yeah, yeah now and again. And they were taking the mick out of me, called me Drew as I was walking off. Because <laughs> that's all he buys is these industrial uh, yeah, lampshades. Of course, yeah. Every yeah. shot, every uh, film he does is, Oh, industrial lights. Uh, so the, yeah, they were taking the mick out of me for buying the light, just playing they were, they were a lovely couple. Uh, but yeah, for three quid, I'll buy them all day long. Um, right, back to the uh, the family now guys. Oh, they give me these. They give me those to go with the candlestick for the uh, for the money, like. Free of charge, all the candles to go in it. Special colours too, so I don't know whether that has significance. Uh, you got red, green, yellow, blue, and white. No doubt it has some significance because they are the uh, genuine candles for it. So, <coughs> there you go with it. Same money. Next, guys, we have a selection of Indian paper mache boxes from Kashmir. Now, I mean, they are absolutely gorgeous. Let me just get them out of the box here in a minute. I have how many I've got. Sorry guys, just wait a second. One, two, three. I have four boxes that I paid a fiver for. Now I'm gonna give you a look at all four boxes. Now bear in mind they had a big box full. They had eggs, they had little trinket pots and that, but I picked the four finest ones they had. They are oh, beautiful. Uh, as I say, paper mache from India, Kashmir. These boxes are absolutely stunning. I don't know if you're capturing how beautiful they are on uh, on the camera. Hard to tell. This one has its original label. Hopefully that's focusing in. Here we go. Um, Kashmir, India. Price, I can't even read it. Um, number. Well. All about it to me is they actually have the label for Kashmir India on them. And absolutely stunning. So you add that one. This one with the, uh, the flowers on. They all just open up. They're all just boxes, containers. Absolutely stunning though. Really do like them. This little spice jar or something is absolutely stunning. Beautiful design. And they're all in such lovely condition. And you just mentioned about the mache that you just reminded me of a Bradley's project and I believe I got you. Oh, right, yeah. Yeah, you and, John's. and now I want to go shopping up for Aberdeen. This is my favourite. Oh, beautiful. Absolute favourite. This is a pen case or pencil case. Um, have a look at that design. Really is magnificent, guys. I think it got it on backwards. 
that's it. Sorry about that, I had the lid on wrong way around, so now you can see the design. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Of course, these boxes are hand painted, paper mache, and then hand painted. They're not even transfer printed uh, on there, they have hand painted boxes. You know, pencil box or pen box. Well, you could you really think of a better way to keep your beautiful, you know, vintage marble Parker pen or something in? Really nice. So, as I said, I paid a fiver for the four. Now, I think they're 20 quid a box all day long. Absolutely love them. They're going to look beautiful on the shelf, lit up, and I'm really pleased. Then, I moved on, and they had, they pulled out the box. And I saw like a, I went, this is off the same people, so. all off the same people. Uh, they've travelled all over the world. It was absolutely amazing. You go Jerusalem there, India here, now we move to some Persia. They pull out the box and I go, how much is the copper bits? And they said, oh, two pound each, three pound each. I said, well, I tell you what, how about I just give you a tenner for the box? <laughs> and they said, Sounds good. So I bought it. Guys, seriously. Some of the nicest Persian copperware I have had in a long, long time. And there it isn't just one or two pieces. I'm going to do some photographs of this lot later so that you can uh, see the designs properly because this camera really just isn't focusing in very well. But all this is hand beaten flowers and things pierced around the base. That vase on its own is like £30. It is spectacular. Real good quality. So do you add the vase? Wrong one. We have a little box that you'd put, well, with the piercing around the top, I would imagine you'd put some like dry flowers and that in there, like a potpourri uh, for smelling and that, but I could be wrong. It could be for spices, could be for anything. Absolutely stunning again. Honestly, guys, you, you, I don't know if this camera is focusing in. I don't know if there's enough light, uh, but the design is all hand beaten. Uh, it is quite spectacular. Lovely colour to the copper. So that's the second. They're all going to be around the same sort of money. <sighs> Spectacular pot. Again, I love the design. I love copperware anyway, guys, but this is really, really fine pieces. <sighs> yeah, that's got to be 40 quid. Got to be 40 pound. Love it. So that's three. Should we keep going? Beautiful little vase. Really thick, heavy foot. Oh, this camera is doing my crust in. I don't know why it isn't focusing in. My normal camera would focus in beautiful. And this wasn't a cheap camera, it's the Canon GX7 Mark II. G7X Mark II rather, I just paid nearly £700 for this with the accessories for my boy for Christmas and it just it doesn't do the same job as my other one. So we had a pair of these ones, absolutely stunning, they'll go as a pair for about £35-£40. So as you can see this is really added up to be a really nice little box of copper and we're still not done. got some bird in brass on the top um, again all hand beaten design quite something this lid is a little I think the, the top's a little bent it keeps, it keeps pushing the lid out so I'll have to have a look at that but it is a perfect fit but for some reason it's just springing the lid back out so I'm gonna have to have a little look I think it's just been bumped out of a uh, circle slightly but Wow, beautiful piece again. We have a pair of tumblers. Uh, 
and we have another pot. The downside with this one, unless it's in the box, it's lost the handle. It would have been another teapot, but it's lost the handle. Um, I'm praying the handle's in the box, to be totally honest with you, because, oh, what a beautiful piece. I hope it's there. But uh, that's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine pieces of Persian copper, guys. Middle Eastern copper for a tenner. Beautiful. Absolute beautiful, love it. So already they've travelled all over the place. They've already travelled and then they go to Italy and they buy a marble bust of Beethoven. They give me this free of charge. Totally free of charge. Uh, it's not an old one, you know, made in Italy on the base. Um, little onyx base and I'm not sure if that's parium wear or something like that um, it is a signed piece but they gave me that free of charge um, it's not gonna go for fortunes 15 20 pounds something like that in the shop but could you imagine the life they've had traveling around all these different countries and she told me every piece on the table they actually brought back from going to that country and the pieces I didn't buy were unbelievable this is just the pieces I did buy they had some stuff guys honestly and they were selling it so cheap I don't know what happened but oh. this piece here come off them as well and I'm not a hundred percent what it is um, I'd say it's it feels a bit like some form of plastic but it's not um, I'm not sure if it's like a polished crystal of some description is it it looks like function? honeycomb. Could be honeycomb. I don't think it's amber. Um, so I'm going to have to do some research on this. I'm going to get some photographs. It's got crystallization in the, um, the actual piece. And then all these individual pieces of crystals that have been polished. Uh, it's really quite interesting. But genuinely, I don't know what it is. Sorry, look what I just found on my phone. Uh, no, don't. <laughs> Who are you going to call? Wasp, Buster. Just another day in the life of my head. <laughs> she got one, she. Basically, uh, my house got invaded by wasps a few years ago, guys. So, I had to go up and exterminate them, and that's me. It's not focusing in again. That's me there, all dressed up in with a wasp, uh, <laughs> wasp outfit on so they can't get me. I've sellotaped my uh, wellies and everything so they can't get in. And I got a face mask, a big mesh screen. And of course I had to take a photograph. <laughs> and I had to go up and I had to nuke the wasps. I've got a video of a nuke uh, the one I Yeah, we don't need that. No, I don't. Anyway, if anyone knows what this is, I would appreciate it because I do think, you know, the amount of work, I don't think it's um, a cheap item, believe it or not. It's lost one crystal by you. I could be wrong, it could just be a plastic bowl, but from the quality of the pieces they had, and the fact I haven't seen one of these before, um, yeah, I think it's a mineral of some sort, I really do. Honestly wish you could see the crystallization in that in this. And the way, it's got tumps of wear on the base, this has got some age too. So, if anyone knows what that is, I wouldn't mind the help on that one. Same people, guys. For a pound, an absolute stormer of a crystal heart paperweight, and it is beautiful. Um, I haven't looked at it yet for a signature, but I think it's going to be Waterford or something like that. Real fine quality. Honestly, it is beautiful. I don't know if you can see the quality of that, but it was a pound. And if I can't find a signature, it's going to go out for a tenner. If I can find a Waterford signature or a Stewart or Edinburgh or something along them lines, then it'll go out for about 25 or 30 pounds in the shop. Look at that, son. That was gorgeous. I was just looking at it. Absolutely stunning. Right, then. So we come into the end of the box. Fingers crossed now I'm hoping that the, the handle for that teapot's in there. Really awful. And it's not. Get in or what? to go back to um hey guys send me the handle if you watch my film <laughs> i want the handle uh, right 
same family guys there's one final piece I want to show you and I upset a few people by buying this because I was buying so well off them I, I had a rapport going and we were chatting and she turned around to me and said oh I got vinyl as well now I don't buy vinyl it's a nightmare um, but she turned around she said I got some really good vinyl I said okay what have we got she said I got Beatles I said well of course I got one and we done a deal here's the first Shaved Fish by John Lennon with the Apple label so there we go now the prices of these LPs is literally all over the place guys um, you can buy them cheap and people are asking hundreds from there's the Apple label the Beatles very own label Sand? Oh, yeah. the LPs are in very good condition the vinyls there's no scratches or if there is a very very minor I did look them up uh, checking the scratches now honestly the prices are all over the place you can start on eBay for a few quid and go up into the hundreds of pounds for that one this one here a hard day's night by the Beatles on uh, Parlophone I think this one is yeah Parlophone it's crazy money it starts again like tens and twenties and goes up into the hundreds um, obviously a little bit of wear to the cover there but the actual vinyl again is in good condition so we got the hard day's night from the uh, Beatles by the Parlophone now the best one and this is the one they were all crying over, guys. The help. Beatles help. Now it's got a tear help. along the top here. Um, again, the vinyl is in good condition. Parlophone again. The vinyl's in good condition. Now, I found them as low as a hundred sold as dear as 409 pounds sold and actually up for sale eight and a half thousand five and a half thousand four and a half thousand for just for this crazy now obviously they're going to have signatures on or they're going to be something rare uh, to be asking them stupid monies i i um, honestly don't know i don't deal in vinyls but i knew enough to buy these i paid 30 pound for the three beatles vinyls and they threw in the marble Beethoven with a free of charge. So, there we have the three vinyls. What am I going to do with them? Truthfully, I don't know yet. I'll probably put them in the shop window and see what uh, offers I get. I do have a woman coming in. Uh, a woman came in uh, last week and sold me quite a bit of Chinese porcelain. And she deals in music memorabilia. So, the only trouble is I only see her every few weeks. So the next time she comes in, if I still got these, then I'll have a chat with her, see if we can do a deal on some Chinese porcelain and do swapsies. Um, failing that, um, I truthfully don't know what makes these Ray albums or common albums. I think they're all first pressings, looking at the back. And I'll give you a little look at the back, so that you, if you know anything, you can, uh, you can tell then yourself. If it ever focuses it, this camera is shit. Excuse my language, guys, sorry. Yeah, it's just not focusing in for me to do it. So I'll have to put them down and I'll film them in a minute just so you can see the backs, guys. Because uh, I just don't think there's enough light there. Sam, can you pass me those two bronze pieces on the till? I've got one last piece to show you. Come off a different buyer, guys. This come off Julian, my regular, uh, my regular the one I had the Chinese off. And we have a nice early shoe stretcher. Lovely patina on it, good condition. It's got its um, little bronze uh, pieces you'd put in here if you want to put a lump in it, uh, for, I don't know, for whatever reason. A bunion. Bunion, anything, I don't bloody know what it's for. Uh, so, yeah, really nice little shoe stretcher, nice bit of age to it, open the shoe up. And uh, as I say, I'm the couple of bronze pieces there. Now I paid a fiver for that, purely because I thought I loved the look of it. I thought that's gonna look absolutely beautiful in the shop, 
and it just has a lovely look to it. I won't chuck fortunes on it, maybe 15 or 20 quid. But it is a nice early one, good quality. Lovely patina to the wood, nice patina to the iron handle. And bronze at the back here, and two bronze knuckles or whatever they are for stretching out the shoes. They obviously belong to it because they got the holes up both sides in order for you to insert them to put the lump in the shoe for some reason. Um, so that's about it guys. <laughs> I love my days buying. Uh, that copper weigh is going to pull me a few hundred pound in. Um, the cashmere boxes ain't going to be far off a hundred. That little enamel light is nice. The Jerusalem uh, candlesticks nice. The Beatles albums. Let's be honest. Worst case scenario, I got 100 quid. Best case scenario, I got a few hundred quid. Um, if anybody collects Beatles, feel free to uh, PM me an offer on Facebook, guys. Because um, they mean nothing to me. As far as I'm concerned, they can go. Uh, I bought them in purely as profit. It's not that I'm not a Beatles fan. I love the music and I love the film. Um, film? Hard Day's Night, the film. Oh, okay. It was a crazy film I watched years and years and years and years ago. Um, I think it was a spy spy type film, oh, if I, I remember, remember right. So, yeah. What do you think? Cracking little haul for not a lot of money spent. I don't think I spent 50 quid all day. And I got some beautiful things to show you from last Thursday's buying, guys. Um, and I don't just mean stock. I've done a video to show you my stock where I got, oh, I got Jeeves. And I'll show you him in another film. I'm going to leave it there, guys. Do you want to say goodbye? If you've enjoyed the film, enjoyed looking at the stock, I would appreciate a like and a share. If you're new to the channel, please subscribe and leave a comment to Hi. let me know you've subscribed. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I'm, I'm a bit trapped. You'll find me on Facebook, I have a page on the group Antiques Arena. You'll find me on uh, my own website, antiquesarena.co.uk and antiquesarena.com. Or you can come visit me at the shop, 78 Oxford visit Street. At the shop. 78 Oxford Street, Mountain Ash, Charlie Fox Road, 45, 3 Hotel Bravo. Thanks for watching, guys. <laughs> Bye for now. Bye.